Hey guys, welcome back to Any Last Words. I'm your host, Joe. If you're new here, please make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and follow button. If you're not, welcome back. Uh, my guest tonight is Mark Valenti. How are you doing tonight? I am fantastic, Joe. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm really uh, pleased to be on here. How are you? I'm great. I'm happy to have you on. Well, thanks. Appreciate the opportunity. Um, so we've got some interesting stuff to talk about tonight, if I do say so myself, because you, um, you're an actor and you also, you also kind of have another profession that, uh, that, um, well, I mean, it's not anything close to acting, I guess, but <laughs> you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? <laughs> yeah, Joe, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, my, uh, most of my life I've, um, worked in healthcare and behavioral health psychology, uh, for a few decades now. And um, just recently, last year, made the switch to acting, producing, and uh, more recently, writing, which I can actually give an update on that too. So I, I figured human behavior is extremely fascinating. And when people act, uh, they're in a lot of ways becoming a different part of themselves. So why not? And I give, and I say that not to be flippant, because I realize there's a lot of people that have been doing this for quite some time, and I've had the privilege to meet them in the last year. Um, it's a lot of work to do all of this, and I give them a lot of credit. So I just, you know, kind of experimenting a little bit, and I appreciate all the opportunities I've been given. That's awesome. Do you? Um, what What made you want to go from behavioral health to acting? Like that's that's like a, yeah, that's a leap in another direction a little bit. Yeah, great, great question. Uh, very behavior based question, Joe. I'll give you credit for that. It's um. I've always been a fan of horror movies, uh, always, you know, since a little kid, you know, and of course I have my reanimator shirt on right now. Nice. Um, but I've also been a fan, right? I've also been a fan of behavior and sort of the duality as well, right? So, you know, although I have the shirt on now, um, I don't have the background that I think a lot of guests have, you know, like you have there, for instance, very interesting. I'm a big fan of sort of the veneer of professionalism and then what's underneath as well. And um, yeah, and I think, to be honest with you, it was COVID that made me sort of look uh, at different things. And Kickstarter, of course, I know a lot of people go to Kickstarter or Indiegogo. And I was fortunate enough to read um, about a project in Philadelphia by a director, Bianca Crespo, who's been wonderful, who was in Philadelphia, which is about four and a half hours from where I am. And uh, she was like, hey, for a couple hundred dollars, you can have like a background part in a movie and help produce this. And it just really kind of got me started and it's been a wonderful experience ever since. You know, I, I think COVID kind of gave a lot of people an opportunity to stop and look at themselves and realize, hey, I, ha I have time now because we're always so consumed with our jobs, our families, where, where do we have to go like every 10 seconds of the day? And COVID kind of stopped everything and made you kind of like, wait a minute, I, there's other stuff like I can do stuff like I can really do stuff so that's really cool that you know you took advantage of that as well I do think a, I, I don't feel a lot enough people took advantage of that but I know a lot of people did yeah you're, you're entirely right about that right as human behaviors uh, approach like we have a lot of needs you know and um, don't worry this isn't going to be a course on all this but you know we all we have three levels of needs right when it comes to human behavior it's um first level we're biological needs, right? We want food, water, probably learn about Maslow's hierarchy of needs at some point in psych class. Once we get those basic needs met, we have a need to connect with other people. We look for sort of approval and we look for avoidance of disapproval. But once we get those needs met, we're at a level where we're looking to learn and grow as a human being, or we're dedicated to a higher purpose. So I think to your point, a lot of us had to reconnect with what was important to us and almost rebuild our motivation and then some of us found different ways to express. So um, you're spot on, Joe, with that. Thank you. I got something right today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, but, you know, going back a little bit to um, what you said at the beginning, how um, kind of paraphrasing, paraphrasing, I suppose, you said you don't, maybe not, maybe not as qualified as the past guests. I don't mean to be rude by saying it that way because, you know, you've not done acting or maybe not as much into horror facts or anything. But, you know, I don't think that that's, like, entirely true. I mean, maybe not, like, um, 
not um you know maybe like the characters and whatnot but you deal or you have seen like real life horrors if you will like what goes on in the mind you know like ah, that's real suffering that's real horror to me like people <laughs> yeah i appreciate you saying that um yeah i mean i guess what i'm saying is by saying that earlier um I, I, I'm going to give credit to people that have been doing this for a long time. I, again, met a lot of great people, um, including Bianca Crespo, including um, some of the folks around here. And again, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, but I, so I don't want to make it seem like I can just slip right in and all of a sudden be like, hey, I'm just as good as anybody else. <laughs> so, um, but you're right, right? I think, you know, it's, when I was on um, the Axe to Grind set, and I see Bo actually wrote on the thing, he, I saw I met him there as well on set. Um, oh. You know, I was on set for like maybe 12, 13 hours a day, but that day of being out there waiting for one possible shot um, was infinitely better and easier than, let's say, having to work in uh, an area when some people were struggling with um, all sorts of behavioral health issues, which is not to say that it's not an important job, but it's a different type of mentality. And I know I'm you know, still fairly new to this, but it's, I'm really enjoying myself. It's a different mentality and I appreciate um, being able to kind of glimpse into this world considering, um, you're right, some of the things that I perhaps have worked, people have worked with over the years. Yeah, it's, it's, it, to me, it's kind of almost like a slight advantage, I guess. Yeah, I see uh, one of your commenters, Jesse, uh, says behavioral oh, research yeah. seems like a huge asset in filmmaking. Absolutely, okay. right? It's um, it definitely is. You know, it's given me a different perspective because I do a lot of. Um, it's funny in my job over the years, I actually write a lot of scripts and actually have acted as a patient or as a physician, and with some of my colleagues, kind of done different things as an example. So, um, I see Michael. Uh, Dark one, is, uh, who is of course a guest I was referring hey, to, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> um, as part of working on that on um, Once Upon a Nightmare, an opportunity to kind of practice using that scripting and behavior in a way and putting it to paper and have the opportunity to write one of those episodes. So I really appreciate uh, Michael and Dexter who are part of that that and uh, giving people the opportunity to experiment a little bit, and I give them a lot of credit for being courageous enough to take a risk on people that are, are just kind of learning. And and again, this isn't a shameless plug, but uh, if you go to Indiegogo uh, and you look up um, Once Upon a Nightmare, you could uh, see if there's some things yourself, if you're just getting started, if you want to try to get some experiment out there with a really fantastic project in Pittsburgh. You plug whatever you would like to plug. So okay. I'm actually yeah. going to type it in the comments right now so that if anybody kind of misses it, they'll see it and maybe click on it or something later on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. No. Do not be sorry. This is. Uh, I, I'm following your lead on on the show. I think. Um. What it is is. I think it's really about challenging yourself, right? If some if somebody somebody puts me into a situation where okay, a patient is struggling with diabetes, talk with them. I can do it. But being on set, giving opportunity for writing, getting an opportunity to act, getting an opportunity to meet some really great people, it's outside my comfort zone. And I think for anybody. Um, it's really up to you to try to push yourself in the, the deep end of the pool. I mean, look at you, right? I mean, you just let me know that you've done multiple different podcasts and you did it very humbly, by the way. I want to point that out. Oh, but, thank you. <laughs> but, well, it wasn't a humble brag where you say, well, by the way, I'm doing this. But I think um, you, um, you, done, you do a tremendous job and I think you, you push yourself to do something because you're intrinsically motivated. Yes, absolutely. Well, yeah, I guess I was motivated. I don't know. I guess bore, boredom motivates you. <laughs> I guess you're right. I guess. You, still, you still made the choice to do it because, uh, Joe, you could have sat home and been like, yeah, I don't want to do a podcast, but you still chose to do it. So, right. All, all about quick, making the choice. Sorry, real quick. Hi, Ishmael. Sorry. <laughs> I wanted to make sure I said hi to him real quick. I didn't want him to feel like I was ignoring him. <laughs> no, it's okay. He said, it, he said it a couple of times. I was like, oh, sorry. <laughs> And, and Joe, I'm going to challenge you for something for the rest of this podcast, and maybe to think about this. Is it to not say sorry? That's correct. That's exactly right. How did you know I was going to say that? Because everybody tells me to stop saying that. Well, unless you hurt me in some way, um, then apologies aren't necessary. I know. I know. It, it's, I don't know. For some reason, it's just a weird habit to say, I don't know if it's just out of nervousness or whatever it is, but just for some reason, it's just really a habit to say it. If I go over a bump, oh, sorry. 
That's I didn't fair. hurt anybody. I just, <laughs> oh, my bad. <laughs> That's fair. You know, it's up to you to choose. I was just, you know, calling it out as a challenge. So Thank you. You're, but you're right, though. I do need to work on that. So. <laughs> <laughs> And Jesse has a comment for us. He says, I think this pandemic era has given me the time to really map out some projects. It starts to seem less overwhelming. It does kind of keeps the focus off of, I mean, not that we should ignore what's going on, but it kind of takes the, the impact of it, the gravity of a lot of it off. It can overwhelm a lot of people. Why am I out of focus? Sorry. I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. <laughs> not sorry. I think that's it, right? I think a lot of people are struggling. Hey, Robert, uh, best saying hi as well. Uh, I think uh, a lot of people are struggling. I've heard people struggle with guilt as well, um, where people are doing some great projects and they're trying things out and then they're saying, well, I feel guilty about it because other people don't have it. I mean, again, people are going to, um, people are going to have to struggle with navigating their own guilt, you know? So I think just a lot of this, as Bo says here, soul searching, soul seeking, a lot of people are doing some introspection on the way they navigate. And it's been an interesting, ex huge social experiment, I'm sure people have heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so during so during this time, how many projects have you been able to squeeze in? Mm. Yeah, so that, that's a great question. So I kind of um, went full force on this whole thing. Um, I've been using, I've been in behavioral health for decades now. So you know, I'm like, yeah, let, let, maybe I need something different to do. So I've been able to sort of just do it all at once. Um, so I've been on five film sets since August. And I have a great opportunity, as I mentioned, to work with, um, again, Michael and Dexter. And again, thankfully, they're in Pittsburgh. I didn't even know that. Uh, yeah. I'm actually, yeah, I just did a table read for Christmas Slasher, which is um, going to be filming in Duluth. Oh. Are you familiar with, with that one? Uh, I had Destiny on like last summer, yeah. and I absolutely fell in love with that girl. We just did Shock Fest. I actually, I like, I just send her a bunch of stuff. <laughs> it's like a thank you because yeah. she supported me on my film. And it was just, it was just so nice and generous, especially when she's got her own that she's got to worry about right now. So she's just, I love right. her. She's, she's so yeah, she was. She, she is adorable. She, uh, <laughs> professionally adorable, of course. I think yeah. Um, we, uh, yeah, we had a table read myself and Landon Banks and Destiny. And uh, what I loved about her is that as a director, she kind of gave us direction on where to go, but she allowed us to ad lib. So I'm really looking forward um, to, to working with her. Um, then I'm working with, of course, as I mentioned, uh, Dexter. Thanks, by the way, for that positive comment, Dexter and Michael. Um, Hopefully, you know, that's a long, long term sort of connecting on a couple different episodes, but also um, the macabre, which is uh, with Eric Mathis, uh, Abel Berry, of course, who has the uh, Dr. Gift coming out this year. I, I can go on and on, but I just have really appreciated the connections and it's given me the experience. So I've gone on some, uh, what do you call it, auditions, both virtual and in real life. And just got involved with some things. And I realized that the more that you're just a decent human being and connect with people and learn from people and are humble, the more people connect with you and get a chance. And I just, and again, maybe I'm, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm sort of, uh, from a healthcare perspective, it's just, this is just an entirely new world. And I've just been so thankful for the filming and independent filming and horror movies and everything and just how wonderful everybody's been and, and collaborative. And I'm looking forward to continuing on with them. Well, I definitely think that you are in the right hands and the right direction with Dexter and Michael and Destiny and all them because they're 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 so sweet. They're all such nice. Like you can just mm -hmm. tell they're genuinely good hearted, nice people that they're, they're not trying to steer you in the wrong direction. They just want to have a good time and make good films. So that's right. And uh, they're intrinsically motivated and they're out there. That, so that's, that's awesome. I agree. And you too, right? I mean, you're doing this. You're, you're getting people on your show. You're getting people talking. I think it's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let's see. Um, I don't want to miss anything that you want to get out there before I start asking you more random questions. <laughs> okay. No, I mean, um, no, I'm good. Okay. I mean, there's, there's no, I mean, yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm d just a lot of different projects. And I'm, I'm, if I'm forgetting to mention anybody, um, you know, I'll type it up on, on Facebook or something. But just, uh, yeah, no, that's good. It's, um, we're, it's a conversation. So please go on. Well, I, I saw that you're also involved with Seasons as well. Yes, yes. Another great one, too. Right. So and that's the thing. Too. Here's the other thing I want to say. These directors. Right. So um, sees, you know, Destiny, of course, on um, Christmas Slasher. Uh, Will Collazo on. Um, Revenge of the Zombies, um, and then 
Tim Mellican was working with on uh, Seasons, right? Uh, I'll ask you why you asked about that. I, um, but all of these people respond directly. Like, I know they're busy. So if I have questions like, hey, what's the update on the shooting schedule? Or, hey, where are the, where's the hotel people are staying? Not one single person has said, you know, it, you know make, made a big deal about that. They get back to me. I'm, I'm just astounded how quickly. I know these people are busy. When I did Axe to Grind, um, the, the, the team on that as well, everybody was just so responsive. So, yeah, season specifically, Tim has been wonderful. Um, so why would you ask about that? Well, I had them on not that long ago as well. And I saw that you had um, you had tagged something about seasons not that long ago that came up in my feed on Instagram. So I was like, oh, okay, cool, cool. You're part of that as well. Like they, I, I'm excited to see it. It sounds like it's a really cool concept. So yeah. Mm. Yeah, the, yeah, the anthology uh, film, you're absolutely right. And thanks for remembering. I'm impressed because yeah. that, that I'm sure you get a lot of things in your feed. But yes, it was a season shirt that I was wearing, and I'm super excited to be part of the uh, one of the seasons as a you know, small part, but enough to, you know, get out there on set and it's kind of fun. So, yeah. Oh, so, um, and can I ask in any of the parts you played, have you died yet? <laughs> That's a great question. Um, yes, I actually, did. well, I can't. A morbid question or straight <laughs> off the bat, but have you died yet? How did you die? No, so, I'm just kidding. so as much as I don't want to give spoilers away, um, out of the different sets that I've been on, uh, out of the five sets, I died in three of them. So I know that that's a big dream of people in horror as well to die. Not me. So, <laughs> well, you mentioned your movie. What's what's your what's the movie that you're involved with? You mentioned it. Um, the one I'm still kind of working on right now. It's actually it's a Christmas horror anthology called mm. Lore, and it's about Icelandic folklore, and oh, cool. it's a lot different from American holiday traditions. So it's a, it's kind of dark. So. And wow. mythical, and you know, that's yeah. cool. Well, it sounds like it's right up your alley and right up the alley for the show, too. So, oh, yeah, hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Oh, uh, so since I asked, like, you know, if you've died or not, um, I wanted to ask if you could choose how you died in a horror movie, how would you die in a horror movie? Well, that's a great question. Um, so it's interesting. I, uh, Abel, uh, Barry was just posting this on his page because as he's doing, you know, research on uh, Dr. Gift, he had asked the community, you know, what's your favorite kills? He's doing some research. And what I chose for that one was in uh, Friday the 13th, part four, when Crispin Glover's character, if anybody knows what I'm talking about, where he's uh, looking for the corkscrew and Jason comes over and stabs him in the hand with the corkscrew and then slashes him in the head. Um, the reason why it's powerful is one, it's not that intricate, right? It's not like um, Johnny Depp dying in the bed in Nightmare on Elm Street, or it's not, you know, some of the other mystical uh, things. And we can sit here and talk a lot about that. What I like about it is, is that one, Jason comes out of nowhere, and two, because he gets Crispin gets maimed first, he has a chance to respond and act. And you know, he's horrified, and then Jason slices him, and he's shaking as he gets killed. What I like about that kill. Wait a minute, we're talking about getting killed in movies, right? Not in real life, what we would choose. Yes, in, in a horror okay. movie, not in real life. For, that, that's horrible. That's messed yeah, up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just want to make sure we're talking about the same thing. So, um, yeah, so in, in, what I like about that kill is that he has a chance to respond as somebody normally would do, right? I mean, it's um, how somebody would normally respond if they were maimed first, act, acting out of horror, and, uh, you know, so it's kind of cool. So I think that would be an opportunity instead of just an instant kill. Okay, okay. I like it. I like it very much. Now, if you could kill somebody in a horror movie, how would you kill them? Yeah, that's a great question. I would say the op I would say also related to the you know, the lengthy discussion and acting that would occur with that, right? So it's an opportunity, you know, I'm not again for the record, it's the horror community I'm saying in the movie. Um if it's done in an effective way, you could create a sense of terror and fear, you know in um, the anticipation of it, whatever that is. Ooh, so you kind of do a little bit of a build up before the... That's right, oh, exactly. Okay, so, right? okay, I like so, that. Yeah, it's all sort of psychological, right? It's suspense building. Yeah, I like that, I like that a lot. Cause I, I honestly, I really don't jump very much during horror movies, mm -hmm. oh. but I laugh at the people that jump. <laughs> so you but with things immune like... Immune to it or something, immune to it by then now or something. I guess, but when it's something like that, Mm -hmm. 
like it gets that little slow drawn out well not like slow i mean there's you know it's not gonna take the whole damn movie to get to this point but uh, <laughs> but you know it, it's got that linger into like what's gonna happen and then maybe it doesn't but maybe it does kind of deal i don't know that's no you're right well i mean there's a whole you know as somebody who's studied communication over the years there's actually a science to you know, some of these, um, I'm not going to reveal any of that here. I'll leave it up to the, the viewers to go check it out. Um, you know, it, it, there's a science to it, right? I mean, it, it, in, some of them are obvious, right? You have to care about the characters. The Crispin Glover thing that I mentioned, do we care about Friday the 13th teenagers at that point as it, it goes on? Maybe a little bit, but you have to care about the characters. That's one of the reasons, and I like Eli Roth, but I wasn't a big fan of Hostel because I didn't really care if the characters died or not in that in that movie so i never felt that connection to them okay really yes, I mean, that's just... like that movie because that's stuff that really happens in real life. no i don't i don't really <laughs> i mean not yeah. like that like that but i mean there is like no, the buying of selling of people and the torture of people and like absolutely. absolutely you know that stuff that stuff like that was what made me go oh my god like that really happens like to people somewhere in random places around the world yeah no it absolutely does happen and, and of course there's horrific things that happen but in just certain movies you know pumpkin heads another one right wonderful special effects mm -hmm. but you know the teenagers who are out there with their bikes and i haven't seen it in a little while but i just remember watching it like you know what those kids probably deserve to die so then you you're removed from the terror of it because you can't connect to those people. Okay, I gotcha. Okay, I gotcha. Damn kids would have gotten away with <laughs> <with> you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, um, even though you are fairly new to acting yourself, yeah, from what you have experienced and learned and picked up so far, um, to anyone who might be watching this tonight or maybe tomorrow or later on, um, and they might be maybe playing around with the thought of getting into either writing or acting or producing or whatever, do you have any advice you might be able to give some of these kids? Or? Yeah, great, some kids. Um, yes, uh, for the kids out there. I, uh, yeah, you know what it is? I think it's, it's the person that I connected to last year, and it's just through a fluke, is um, Courtney Palm. And if you know her, she was the, the, uh, one of the main characters in Zombieverse. She was Sushi Girl as well, if you ever have seen that. She's been in, and she was in Death House. As they, yeah, I'm sure anyway, I can, Bradley's off. But she's an extremely uh, nice um, person. And we kind of were talking and, and she just gave me advice, right? And one of the biggest bits of advice she gives me was um, be helpful, be humble and be helpful, right? On set. So I think it's, that could be advice for anybody at any workplace. But what it allowed me to do on some of these sets, especially with the smaller crew was like, hey, I, I can help carry this in or I can help, you know, I, I and it's, it seems like such a simple thing, but just being there and willing to be there. And again, when I mentioned about Axe to Grind, being there on set, waiting for the whole day, helping out, carry electrical equipment, whatever it is, you know? So I think, so that's once you get there. But I think to get there, I think, look at Kickstarter, look at Indiegogo. Again, I will, and I swear they're not paying me to say this, but look at like specifically some of the projects out there. Um, you know, Seasons is one, I can name a lot of them, but um, again, Michael and Dexter specifically, They've got a lot of great perks and it's a series so people have a chance to experiment with some different things and i think the biggest thing i want to say is you know that's a good way to get in there especially if you want to jump start it which is what i did but also be okay with taking chances you know um, i've never written a script before like that so i submit it to them and i'll expect some feedback on that and that's okay but it's taking taking a risk you know take that risk be okay um know that people are going to give you radical candor. The good, the people that are affected are going to give you radical candor, not yelling at you, but also not saying, Hey, that's great. And not really meaning it. So I think just really um, being open to hearing feedback and uh, take those risks. Okay. And so as just Robert says, go above and beyond. <laughs> no, go ahead. What'd you say? Be a team player and just be nice. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's right. So obviously, you know, being nice I, from what I understand, just like in any job, right. If somebody's, very skilled, but they're not somebody you want to be around. They don't get, uh, you know, called back. But yeah. I think, you know, being nice gets you there. It gives you opportunities. People are more open to give you feedback. Um, you still got to build your skill set. So I have um, a, a wonderful colleague that I met on um, the Freak movie with Bianca that I did. Um, a new actress, new actor. Her name is uh, Amelia Duncombe. Um, and 
I had a call with her this past week and I just, she just gave me some advice on different things to do. And people have been tremendously helpful. So um, I can't, I can't actually believe how helpful people have been. Yeah. I, I was, I was very surprised. Well, when I officially, I guess officially joined the horror community, like when you start going to conventions and going to movie sets and like hanging with everybody who does this, yeah. <laughs> I was, I was honestly like fairly surprised how like accepting and helpful and cool everybody is with everyone else. Like that's right. I, I, it's such a large, I guess, click, if you will. Um, that's right. That's right. And yeah. I've never been in before. I mean, like I've, I've never been in such a big group of people that just get along and just want to do the same things, you know, and we're all into the same stuff. So I, it's just, it, I don't know. It still throws me off. So <laughs> I think it's cool though. Yeah, it really is. It totally is. Um, yeah. I was at, um, on Backwoods Bubba set at the beginning of uh, oh. October, right? Which was another amazing experience. Uh, Rebecca Reinhardt was there and Brad Thomas, oh. the director. And, um, you know, he wasn't filming, but Rob Mello and his, and his wife, Mindy, were there. And he, another another actor, of course, you know him as the uh, killer from um, Happy Death Day. He was like, without, you know, anything, just wanted to kind of give me advice on an audition that I was taking. I just, again, just totally blown away by all of this. That's so. awesome. I love Rebecca. I'm actually, that's one, um, when we were talking before, she's, yeah. um, I'm on a show with her once a month. Oh. Doing oh, horror. Okay. She That's knows it. her stuff. She is yeah, she like walking Google of horror. <laughs> That's right. She definitely is. Definitely. Had, um, yes, I was quite impressed and frightened in a good way about her knowledge of horror. But she's been really cool to me over the over the time that I've known her as well. Oh, yeah. She's super nice. But yes, she she is a little intimidating by how much she knows. So on the show, I kind of just stay a little <laughs> quiet. I'm just like, mm -hmm. yep, just <laughs> what right. you said, Becca. Yep. But, yep. Nope. I agree with her. Yep. <laughs> that's right that's right exactly good approach good approach <laughs> just to be safe about it so. <laughs> that's right that's right too <laughs> oh richard said K uh horror is a close tight-knit community it is very much um yep. richard like richard he was uh, a viewer from the other show that i've done for three years i met him in texas and i've been friends with the guy forever i love his face he's awesome nice yes a lot of cool flasks <laughs> <laughs> That's right. uh, and Rob Robert says that uh, Kane Hoder is really chill. I'd love to meet him someday. I've heard nothing but nice things about him. But he was well, he was in Backwood Bubba, wasn't he? Uh, Kane Hoder, no, he uh, he was not. But he is going to be on one of the episodes of um, Once Upon a Nightmare as well. Ah, okay, okay. Is there any more um, info you can give us on Once Upon a Nightmare that we might not have gotten from Michael, or is there anything um, you want to maybe recap on for people who might not have joined us the last time? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously I'll direct people to, I know you put it on there on the Indiegogo site, or check out mm -hmm. the um, Facebook site. I know that uh, there's a wonderful site that Michael and the team keeps updated on Facebook, so definitely check out Once Upon a Nightmare. Uh, I don't know. I mean, like, you know, I, I've only recently in the last few weeks really been connected to the wonderful team there. So I will defer if they have anything else. But I don't think there's anything else I could, could add to to things that haven't, haven't already been there. But I, what I really love about it is this um, almost like this open source, if you're you know familiar with that concept, open source, like back in the day, and maybe they still do it. I, I haven't been paying attention to computers in a while. They have open source software, right, where anybody could go in and just try to build something. It's what Wikipedia is founded on, right? People go in. And together we make a better thing, and mm -hmm. uh, and I think just I've just been really impressed by that attitude of there's some definitely professionals on there, but there's also opened up to people that are experimenting, and I think it's really um, really just building on itself. And I think together we kind of move every day closer to better. And uh, Robert wrote in there, yes, once upon a nightmare, the web yes. series. I know he's involved with this as well. Yes, Robert's involved in a lot of stuff. That man, <laughs> yeah. like. Ooh. <laughs> Yes, I see him well, everywhere. So. I don't know how he has so much. I mean, maybe that's why he like doesn't have time to put a shirt on or something. Because he's like always working <laughs> out or he's yeah, always doing yeah. a move. That's right. I exactly. love you, Robert. I love you. <laughs> yes, yes. He's a hard worker for sure, I'd say. A lot of hard workers, that's for sure. But yeah, definitely. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes, there they really, there really is a lot of passionate, hardworking people. Um, that I, I very much enjoy watching everyone's progress and the new projects that they have going on and just you know thing just anything that they've got going on positive i absolutely enjoy and i'm excited to see um just like with you know uh, once upon a nightmare and seasons like i'm excited to see all that stuff i'm so i'm kind of happy too that 
a lot of stuff, a lot of really good stuff, like was in the process at like the end of the year, because I don't feel like there's enough good stuff coming out at the beginning of the year. So I know a lot of this is going to start coming soon. Not all of it, but some of it's going to start coming soon. So I'm excited. (laughs) Yeah, no, you're absolutely right about that. Um, Yeah, a couple things are coming out, of course, you know, the freak movie that I mentioned about Bianca, but also um, Barry Stone production of Strix is coming out at the end of February. I know a few people, including Robert, I believe, actually, because he was on the TV, I think, on one of the scenes, um, is also coming out. So that's exciting as well. So, yeah. That's the one with the skate, the roller skates, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, skates. see? Okay. Obviously, it's... <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to yeah. keep up. The visualization is there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's actually the first film that I've ever been in where I was actually talking. So I really appreciated that that time to get in the, the spot so Very cool and yes dexter we uh okay so you're it looks like uh, mr C- oh you're okay you're familiar with the nice yes yes with mr the street oh yeah he sent that to me last year um maybe towards the end of summer and i got to read it and i was like holy crap i like this because he's a hypnotist as well so I thought that was really interesting that he's a hypnotist and like he kind of uses some no of that. Spoilers, no spoilers. I, I don't. No spoilers. Oh, no, no. I didn't actually get a chance. If you all think. Oh, from, you from didn't. Mr. I'm Mr. sorry. Uh, no, 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 no. He, he just sent it to me. I didn't get a chance to read it exactly yet. So I just want to make sure. I mean, <laughs> not <laughs> sorry. No. no. <laughs> yes, sorry. Hurry up and read it. No. <laughs> No, I'll go I, yes, watch I another appreciate. episode that I did with him on it. So. That's right. That's right. I will. Yes. Yes, Dexter, I'm very interested in seeing that. Um, and yes, Bo actually was also part of Strix as well, though I didn't work with him directly on there. Uh, but we were on Axe to Grind set together, although we didn't have a scene together. So Nice. Anyway, yes. I'm super I know we're out of time, right? I don't want to I don't want to take it. Are we over time? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna punish you now. How dare you take up an extra three minutes ah, of my time? You know, for... I just want to make sure I didn't apologize, but I just want to make sure that I'm drawing attention to the timing. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, is there is there do you have any last words for our viewers? Any last words? I love how you incorporated that in there. I read it somewhere in a title. I don't know. Um no, I think I think just I just again I really appreciated it. Uh, I you know I'm experimenting myself with connecting with different people, trying different things. Um, if anybody else has any advice for me, or if there's anything else that uh, people would be interested in working on, I mean I, I don't know. Like I'm just I'm just trying different things, and I know that I've met some great people on set, and I know this year I'm going to be working with some great people. So. Um, I'm open to any feedback or any thoughts anybody has. So thanks. And I'm and I would love, Joe, unless uh, this has been the worst interview ever, for you to for you to invite me back if there's ever a chance to do that at some point in the future. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. I've had several guests back on. And you you know, it's it's usually when they've got a new project coming on. But if you just like, hey, I just want something to do or I want to push this a little bit more, you're always uh-huh. welcome to come back on. So I'm a anybody super laid back about that. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. But yeah, it is the end of our time. If you guys are interested in collaborating with Mr. Mark Valenti, his links are in the comment or in the description box um, for this video. So you guys can check uh, his IMBD and the other links that he sent to me that I am sharing with you. Uh, And make sure you guys check out the Indiegogo for. once Upon a Nightmare and Seasons is coming up too. Got a lot going on, guys. I'm super excited to see everybody's projects. I really am. Nice. So, uh, and Mark, thank you so much for joining tonight. I really appreciate your time. I know you're way ahead in time than I am right now. All right. So. On the East Coast. It's quite okay. Thanks, um, Joe, for the opportunity to uh, be here. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Like okay. I said, you guys, check it out in the comments. And... I'll see you creepy bastards tomorrow night. (laughs) Bye. Bye Bye-bye.